beekeeping during the winter in the UP is a challenging task, but it's being done by many around the area. Ansley Watson joins us this morning to talk about an informational beginner's class <laughs> for people interested in keeping bees. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Andrew. Do you like my nice new hood? This thing is a wow. necessity when you're keeping bees. But beekeeping is great in general, but to keep them in the UP in these harsh temperatures is just a whole nother conversation. This morning, I'm meeting up with a beekeeper. He's been doing this for over 30 years, so he's a wealth of knowledge. But we're going to be talking about how to survive bees up in the wintertime, how to uh, talk about why the bee population is decreasing. Plus, there's an informational beekeeping class this Saturday, so we'll have more details on that later in the hour. Stay with us. Reporting live in Scandia, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. Okay, thanks, Ansley. As Cassie joins us now, it may seem weird, obviously, to talk about bees in the winter, but we'll hear why. It's it's a year-round activity, but right. some We're of those at 12 people. after the hour. Upper Peninsula's winters aren't too kind for honeybees to survive in. However, Ansley is speaking with a beekeeper who can give some advice on how to make it work. Good morning again, Ansley. Good morning, Andrew. That's right. I am meeting up with a beekeeper, but before we begin, I've got to introduce Nico. He is our St. Bernard here keeping us company, and he has just been an absolute doll. He doesn't want to show his face, so he might be a little camera shy. But anyway, Joel Lamps is uh, joining me this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ansley. So, Joel, you've been beekeeping for you said, over 30 years. How did you begin? Well, I began like a lot of people do. Um, my daughter came to me one day and she said, Dad, how about a project we do for 4-H? And I said, well, that, that'd be cool. She said, what, what do you want to do? She said, well, how about bees? That started it and uh, we kept bees for several years. And then, of course, she goes off to college and uh, like uh, a lot of kids do, well, who gets stuck with what Yeah, Dad. Dad. <laughs> Sounds so, like a familiar story. Yeah, a familiar <laughs> story to a lot of people. So that, that's how I got started and I continued on. It's just become a way of life for me now. So actually, you have your very own bee yard. How many hives do you have? Um, right now, there's probably 10 out there. Okay, and I mean, as we know, in the UP, it's a little bit more difficult. You face challenges here in the UP that many other regions of the country mm -hmm. don't. Speaking of winter, how did you, starting in the fall, provide what the bees needed to get through the winter time? Well, first thing you do is make sure they're going to have lots of food to eat. So you want to leave them with ample supplies of honey to be able to make it through the winter. And next, you want to make sure that um, they're uh, protected from wind. Um, and there are several techniques that, that we use for that. Um, you also want to make sure that they have uh, plenty of ventilation in their hive. Uh, people often make the mistake of too tight a hive, and therefore the bees, um, they expire. They have too much, too much uh, uh, moisture in the mm -hmm. hive, and that will kill them. So anyway, to do that, and then personally, I like what we don't have right now is a lot of snow. That snow comes and it's a wonderful insulator. I bet, yeah. Normally right now, at this point in time, my bees would be buried. You could about walk over the top of them and not know they're there. So um, we like to do that. So assuming that you have a good ventilation and uh, lots of food, the bees will get through unless they have mites. And mites is a whole other issue that uh, is affecting bee populations across the country. Well, let's touch on that. Over the past couple of years, bee mm -hmm. population has decreased. Why do you think that is? Well, there, there are several reasons. One certainly is mites. Uh, this country has half the hives that it had back in the 1950s. Um, we have the number of hives in this country that they have in France, mm -hmm. which is, you know, <laughs> we should have a lot more. And uh, um, a couple of factors um, our pesticides we mm -hmm. use a ton of pesticides today and herbicides that we didn't use then and our bees are being affected by that um, people have heard of colony collapse disorder um, that um, any number of reasons there's pesticides there's mites all these things interacting to make it very difficult another major thing that we have uh, we uh, are a monoculture in many places in this country today where they're they're just nothing for bees to eat and we become very efficient we keep our roadsides mowed right down and um, that eliminates mm. pasture for bees so that makes it tough on them well for those interested in beekeeping there's a class coming this saturday to the peter white, white public library mm -hmm. and we'll have more details on that later in the hour so stay with us okay reporting live in scandia ansley watson tv6 news all right, thank you very much, Ansley. Mm -hmm. And Cassie, as people head out there. For people interested in starting beekeeping, a class is being offered at the Peter White Public Library Saturday. Ansley is back with us now to give us more details on what you could learn. Good morning, Ansley. 
Good morning, Andrew. Joining me this morning is Joel Lance, and he's been beekeeping for well over 30 years. Thank Long you time. so much for joining me. You're very welcome. So you know a lot about bees, obviously, but people Not who... as much as I should. <laughs> You're always learning every single you know, day. Every too. time. Yep. Well, there's a bee class coming up this Saturday at mm -hmm. the library. Give us some details about that. Well, it's at uh, 1030 at the library. It'll run uh, about, about four hours, three to four hours. Bring a sack lunch if you get hungry. And uh, it's going to go into all the basics of what you need to do to get your first package of bees and uh, make them thrive. And so there'll be, uh, who knows, uh, I, I always expect there's only going to be five people and there's always over 50. So oh, I think it's a really interesting thing. Yeah, I think so there's a lot of people that should come and join yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, so you, you should be able to pick up what you need to know and then we fill in throughout the summer with different things and mm -hmm. topics and uh, how to take care of your bees. Now to some it might seem, seem strange that we're talking about bees right now in the dead of winter, mm -hmm. but right now is when you kind of need to start preparing to order some of that equipment. You do. Order your package of bees. Mm -hmm. So what, when does that start up? Well, we're, first you have the meeting, you find out whether or not you're really gonna do it. And then you decide to take the plunge. Um, then you need to start getting equipment. Uh, we'll show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. We're possible places you can go to do that. And uh, then we um, will uh, uh, talk about ordering bees. They will not be ordered at this session. There'll be another session where we'll actually do the ordering. And that will be in February. And uh, you need to order them that soon. Mm -hmm. Most of our bees come from California or Georgia. Uh, don't know where yet this year. There's a shortage of package bees in the country. So it's not an always an easy task to get them. So, and then they actually arrive in April sometime. Okay. And so, um, when do people need to start ordering equipment then, or what types of equipment would they need to order? Well, you need to get your basic hive equipment. Um, we're going to, on Saturday, show all of that equipment and what you need to do to get started, how much it costs, all those kinds of things will be handled on, on Saturday. And there are several bee supply houses that you can get um, your, your supplies through. And so to uh, contact, where can people go? Website, Facebook, what is that information? Well, we have the Superior Beekeeping Club has uh, um, a Facebook page and a website. That's a Superior Beekeeping Club. Um, I have uh, a website with a club page on it. And mine, you can get to it by going to UPBs. Okay. It'll get there somewhere. Okay, so 1030 at the Peter White Public Library mm -hmm. is the bee class begins mm -hmm. until 1.30 yeah, approximately 1.30. How's yeah. it going? You know, you'll, you'll test right. it out. And then we have uh, actually Tuesday night our, our regular meeting um, at the Ordock, and it's going to be at 6 o'clock, and we're going to do some products of the hive, how to make beeswax candles oh, or fun. lip balm or that kind of thing. So anybody's welcome to be there. Come out and enjoy it. Come All right, well, Joel, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. I really, appreciate, I really it. appreciate it. All right, thank you. Reporting live in Scandia, Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 more news after the break.